podcasting with one, two, three, four, or more people? In this video, we'll break down how to set up your space to podcast alone and how to set up to podcast with multiple people, both in the same room and remotely. No matter how many people you have on your podcast, you're going to need some equipment. We'll start with everything that you need for solo podcasting, and then we'll get into the additional equipment that you'll need for multi-person podcasting. You're going to hear about two kinds of microphones, a condenser microphone and a dynamic microphone. A condenser microphone records all around the mic, so it really picks up a lot of background noise, whereas a dynamic microphone is really good at recording what's directly in front of the mic and eliminates any background noise, so this is the kind of microphone that you're going to want. If you're podcasting solo, you'll want one that connects to your computer via USB, and if you're podcasting with multiple people in person, you're going to need an XLR mic with some additional equipment that will get into in a second. Some mics that we recommend are the Audio-Technica 2100X and the Samsung Q2U. Both of these are very budget friendly and they come with both kinds of cables, meaning that you can record in multiple different kinds of scenarios. In addition to mics, you're going to want headphones so that you can monitor your audio levels and your mic positioning throughout the recording. Download a recording software on your computer. Some great free options are Audacity or GarageBand. And if you have a bit of a budget, you can look into Adobe Audition and Pro Tools. If you want to create video content, which we recommend because it's a great way to repurpose your content to promote your show afterwards, then you're going to need a camera as well. For this, you can use your phone with an app installed that turns your phone into an external webcam. You can also use the webcam inside of your computer, but if you want to ensure really high quality video, you can use a DSLR or an external webcam. One tip that I want to mention, if you are posting your video content online, you're going to want to sync up the high quality audio that you record from your mic and the video content that you record from whatever camera you're using. A great way to do this is to clap into the microphone while you're recording video content content, and then later on you can sync up the clap in the audio file to the visual of you clapping. Having multiple people in a recording can be a lot of fun, but there are also a lot more things that you have to consider if you have more people involved. Before we get into the additional equipment that you need, let's talk about some best practices for recording with multiple people. To save yourself a headache in post-production, you're going to need to manage the recording process, which will take practice. If you have more than two people on your show, there can be times when voices overlap and it's very hard for your listener to understand. A great rule of thumb is to have no more than two people overlapping at the same time. This will take some editing until you figure out how to manage it during the recording. One tip for this is if you're running an interview with multiple people, say the name of someone specifically in your question so that they know who's to answer first. Another great way to manage your recording is to get used to using nonverbal cues in order to communicate with your partner. So this could be leaning away from the microphone when you're done talking and leaning in when you have something to say. When it comes to recording with multiple people, there are two ways you can do this, in person and remotely. If you do this in person, it's a little bit more complicated. You will need all of the equipment mentioned previously, headphones, a camera, and everyone involved in the recording session is going to need their own dynamic microphone with an XLR cable. It's notoriously difficult to record more than one USB microphone in one computer. It can be done, but it isn't very reliable. Another thing that we don't recommend is having one microphone in the room with multiple people. The reason for this is that the audio quality is going to be lower because of everybody's distance from the mic, and you're only going to get one audio file for everybody involved in the recording, meaning that it'll be very hard to edit out certain parts of the conversation or coughs and sneezes, things like that. To make this a more seamless process, you'll need an XLR mic setup and an audio interface. This is a piece of equipment that plugs into your computer, which will allow the recording of multiple mics at once and will provide you with separate tracks to edit afterwards. You'll have the ability to adjust audio levels directly on the interface, meaning that you're getting a high quality podcast recording afterwards, saving you time in post-production. To use your headphones with an audio interface, you're going to need a quarter inch headphone adapter. Some audio interfaces that we recommend are the Scarlett 2i2, this is a great beginner setup and you can get them from having two mic inputs all the way to having eight or more mic inputs. Something that costs a little bit more but has more functionality is the Rodecaster Pro. And if you're recording on the go, the Zoom H6 is great for capturing audio in the field and then bringing it back and transferring the files over to your computer to edit. When you're looking for an audio interface, there are a couple things to consider. How many mic inputs do you need? How many people will you be recording with at once? You want to make sure that you choose an audio interface that supports multi-track recordings, otherwise you'll only get one audio file for all of the mics. And you want to make sure that your audio interface will connect to your computer via USB. 
When you get to editing, you want to make sure that you place everybody's audio files on separate tracks. This allows you to isolate parts of the conversation, adjust anybody's audio levels if you need to, take out parts as needed, and add effects onto anybody's voice. Our editing software recommendations are the same as what we recommended to record with. Free versions are Audacity and GarageBand, and if you want to spend a little bit more money, you could do Adobe Audition or Pro Tools. Now that was a lot of information. A much more simple way to record your episode without having to worry about all the fancy equipment and lining up audio and video files is by recording remotely. This way, you eliminate the need for an audio interface whatsoever, and you can save some money by having guests record on some sort of mic that they already own, like headphones with a microphone attached. It's also easier to coordinate timing with multiple people if it's done remotely, and you can record video at the same time using your webcam. When you're looking for a remote recording platform, there are a couple things to consider. You want a platform that will record locally on both you and your guest's computer, meaning that any internet issues throughout the recording aren't going to affect the final audio. You also want to be able to download separate tracks from everybody involved in the recording to allow for easier editing. You don't want your files to get compressed at all, and you want this to be something that is easy to use for both you and your guests. A platform that takes all of these things into consideration is Riverside. You can record with up to eight guests, and you can manage everybody's audio levels directly from the platform. You can either download everyone's tracks individually to move into the post-production phase, or you can merge everyone's tracks normalize audio levels and remove any background noise so that your episode is ready to publish as soon as you click export. You want to make sure that you and your guest are both wearing headphones. This is going to prevent audio bleed, which is when one mic picks up the output of another mic. Record somewhere quiet, somewhere where there's minimal background noise, and if the room is more cluttered and has carpet, it's really going to help with any echo in the room. You also want to make sure that you have a strong internet connection and that you use a platform that supports double-ender recordings. This is when the audio and the video are recorded on everybody's computer locally so that any internet issues don't affect the final audio file. Riverside will do this and then upload those files from you and your guest computers to the cloud so that it's available for the host to download and edit. If you're recording video, make sure to record in a well-lit room. This is going to enhance the final look of your video. Use a software that can record high-quality video. This way you can use any camera that you want, a DSLR, the webcam inside of your computer, or an external webcam. Once you've figured out your podcast setup and you've recorded your episode, then you have to decide on a hosting platform. If you're looking for a free option, Anchor is a great choice, and if you have a bit of a budget, Buzzsprout is another great option. We hope this video has given you some quick tips to get started on your podcast setup. Thanks for watching this video, and if you want to learn how to actually start a podcast, you're going to want to watch this video next, which will give you concrete tips all the way from idea building to monetization.